Hey guys, let's get more news from SAN Francisco 49ers, but first don't forget to subscribe to the channel and leave your like. Geno Smith Injury Update, Seahawks Starter Doubtful as He Battles Problems The Seattle Seahawks provided updates on the injury status of quarterback Geno Smith and running back Kenneth Walker III ahead of Thursday's Thanksgiving matchup against the San Francisco 49ers. While Smith is listed as questionable with a triceps contusion on his throwing arm, coach Pete Carroll expressed optimism about his availability. On the other hand, Walker is deemed doubtful with an oblique injury, and Carroll mentioned that they do not anticipate him playing. Smith, 33, sustained a hit to the right elbow area from Los Angeles Rams defensive tackle Aaron Donald during Sunday's 17-16 loss, sidelining him for most of the fourth quarter. Despite the injury, Smith returned for the final offensive possession of the game. He indicated improvement in his condition on Tuesday, stating, I definitely feel a little bit better after a couple of days. Carroll believes that Smith will play against the 49ers and clarified that the quarterback won't need to undergo on-field tests beyond his usual warm-up. The Seahawks face a crucial divisional matchup that could determine their standing in the NFC West. His attitude was not going to bother him, that it wasn't going to be a big factor, Carroll said. It looks bad because he's got a big bruise on the back of his triceps, but his attitude has been right on it the whole time. He hasn't missed a snap as far as, we didn't let him throw the first couple days, but he didn't miss a snap. He was doing everything. So he's ready to go. While Smith's availability seems positive, the outlook for running back Kenneth Walker III is less optimistic. He is listed as doubtful due to an oblique injury sustained in the same game against the Rams. Carroll conveyed that they do not expect Walker to play in the upcoming contest. The Seahawks, with a 6-4 record, have the opportunity to either take the lead in the NFC West or fall two games behind the 7-3 49ers based on the outcome of Thursday night's game. Despite the uncertainty, Carroll emphasized Smith's positive attitude and readiness to play, signaling his determination to contribute to the team's success. 49 airs Seahawks will each be without a key starter on offense. Thanksgiving is set to have a fiery division matchup between the San Francisco 49ers and Seattle Seahawks. Unfortunately, both teams will each be without a key starter on offense. For the 49ers, they will be without starting right guard Spencer Burford. He's currently dealing with a knee injury, so his status for Thursday is in doubt. Kyle Shanahan said that if the game was on Sunday that he would likely be able to play. But the short week is going to potentially cost his availability. Now, Burford hasn't been great at all this season. Losing him isn't that significant since the 49ers have a solid veteran in John Feliciano who will take over. He might actually be an upgrade there. The 49ers were already discussing rotating Burford and Feliciano before his injury. Feliciano had been starting at left guard for Aaron Banks, who looks poised to return after missing the last two games with a toe injury. As for the Seahawks, they are missing a more pivotal starter than the 49ers are. Running back Kenneth Walker III is listed as doubtful for this matchup. He sustained an oblique injury that knocked him out of the loss to the Los Angeles Rams this past Sunday. So, the Seahawks will look to second-round rookie Zach Charbonnet to fill the void. Walker is a force in the running game, so the Seattle offense loses a threat. This should make it easier for the 49ers to focus on the dynamic duo at wide receiver that the Seahawks have in DK Metcalf and Tyler Lockett. Both receivers have been giving the 49ers fits for the last several years. With the running game losing some luster, it will hopefully give the 49ers better focus. Plus, Geno Smith is probably not going into the game healthy after he suffered an elbow injury against the Rams. Both teams won't be at full strength, but it should still make for an exciting matchup. Seahawks built to compete with 49ers on Thanksgiving. The usually loquacious Pete Carroll could hardly wait to leave the podium while speaking to reporters on a Zoom call from Seattle Seahawks headquarters on Monday. Gotta go, gotta go, Carroll said with a laugh. Last one. You can understand Carroll's haste given everything the Seahawks are up against heading into their Thanksgiving night matchup against the San Francisco 49ers at Lumen Field, 8.20 p.m. Eastern Time, NBC. The circumstances were already challenging enough, with a short week to prepare for a loaded opponent that dominated Seattle in a three-game sweep last season, including the playoffs. Things got even harder for Seattle when quarterback Geno Smith and running back Kenneth Walker III were injured in Sunday's loss to the Los Angeles Rams. 
Carroll expects Smith to play despite the triceps contusion on his right arm that has continued to cause him discomfort, while Walker is listed as doubtful because of a strained oblique. The Seahawks are 7.5-point underdogs, according to ESPN Bet. If that line holds, it'll be the most that a Seattle opponent has been favored by at Lumen Field since the Rams were in Week 5 of the 2018 season, plus 7.5. From the moment the NFL schedule was announced in May, this game looked like the measuring stick to see how much the Seahawks had closed the massive gap between themselves and the 49ers that was repeatedly exposed in 2022. San Francisco won 20-7 in Week 2, with the Seahawks' only points coming on a blocked field goal that they returned for a touchdown. The second matchup in December was an 8.49ers win, but Seattle got a late touchdown that masked what was more of a one-sided affair than the final score indicated. The Seahawks actually led by a point at halftime of their wild catch matchup, but the 49ers' talent edge and physicality won out in the second half of what became a 41-23 San Francisco runaway that included 505 yards of total offense. Over three games, the 49ers outscored the Seahawks 89-43, outgained them 1,259 yards to 825 and took the ball away six times compared to Seattle's zero. Obviously they beat us three times last year, and to me, that's unacceptable, Smith said. The transformation the Seahawks have undergone defensively is the best reason to think they'll be more competitive against the 49ers this time around. After getting run all over last season, Seattle overhauled its front seven via a rare free agent splurge on Draymond Jones and reunions with Bobby Wagner and Jaran Reed. That makeover continued with the addition of Leonard Williams at the trade deadline. The Seahawks also beefed up their secondary by signing safety Julian Love and selecting cornerback Devin Witherspoon with the number 5 overall pick. Witherspoon has arguably been their best defensive player this season. They also have Jamal Adams back after he missed almost all of last season with a quad injury. Thus far into the season, they've been a middle-of-the-pack defense by several measures but much better against the run than a year ago, allowing 4.1 yards per carry compared to 4.9 in 2022. Carroll believes they stack up better against San Francisco now compared to last January, when the 49ers averaged 5.5 yards per carry and got three touchdown passes from Brock Purdy in the wildcard route. Yeah, I like where we are, Carroll said. I like where we are and what we've done coverage-wise and system-wise. This team really does check you out. They'll check out your scheme. So we give them a lot of credit and have a lot of respect for them. But I feel like we're much farther along than we were. The bigger uncertainty is how equipped Seattle is to deal with the 49ers' top-ranked scoring defense, a tall order for a banged-up offense that has curbed its turnover problem in recent weeks but still struggles to sustain drives, ranking 30th in third-down conversions. And you fan, what do you think of the San Francisco 49er selection for today's game? Leave your opinion in the comments.